Hi there. Here is a spoken AI summary of the recent discussion between Lex Fridman and Mark Andreessen on June 21st, 2023. The original interview is 3 hours and 11 minutes long. There is a link to the entire discussion in the description below. In the first hour of the interview, Mark Andreessen discusses a range of topics related to the future of the Internet, technology, and AI in this podcast. He shares his beliefs that AI assistance can expose the entirety of human knowledge making search engines redundant, while also noting that the Internet could be the content for AI to manipulate. Andreessen discusses the potential of language models, LLMs, for investigating contentious issues and holding dialogues on emotionally inflammatory topics. He also explores the impact of LLMs on the scientific process, the collapse of trust in institutions in the U.S., the advantages of startups versus big tech companies, the future of web browsers, and the importance of preserving the free and open nature of the early Internet. Overall, Andreessen's discussion highlights the potential of AI and LLMs to transform nearly every aspect of human life, from how we access information to how we perceive reality. Zero hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the possible future of search engines and how they might become obsolete in the next five to ten years. He believes that AI assistants can interact and expose the entirety of human knowledge and information via natural language, making search engines unnecessary. However, there will still be cases where people will want to investigate sources themselves, and in those cases, an AI assistant would provide the ten blue links for people to investigate. He also talks about how the Internet incorporates all forms of media, and AI is the next step in that evolution, where the Internet is the content for the AI to manipulate. Zero hours, five minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the potential impact on the shape and content of the Internet as search evolves beyond the traditional ten blue links. However, he also highlights the practical concern that it may cut off a significant source of future training data for AI if there's no reason to make web pages. He notes that creating new content is still a motivator, but the form may change to conversations with AI and social media. Furthermore, he mentions the interesting phenomenon of the jailbreak and that the AI that's trained on Internet data has the ability to reincarnate personalities of people within the training set, making them immortal within each new AI that's built. Zero hours, ten minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses some of the questions that need to be answered regarding the future of neural networks. For example, how will mind wiping affect the behavior of the LLMS? And what happens when you even do reinforcement learning? Furthermore, Andreessen touches on the possibility of using human conversations as a potential source of data and talks about the potentiality of synthetic training data to work. Finally, he discusses the use of LLMs for a role-playing conversation that may lead to a giant ocean of new possible conversations, thereby resulting in fresh signal and knowledge. Zero hours, 15 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the potential of language models like GPT for investigating contentious issues and holding dialogue on emotionally inflammatory topics. He explains that language models, by nature, do not have a point of view, and that you can set the parameters of the debate, steering the conversation to be more confrontational or remain neutral. Andreessen also highlights the potential of an LLN to strip bias from news articles. However, he acknowledges the challenge of truth-seeking in the age of language models and the balance between hallucination and creativity. Andreessen shares an example of his conversation with a law firm, assuming that an LLN would have to be 100% truthful. But the law firm preferred a model that allowed for creative interpretation based on learned patterns. Zero hours, 20 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the potential for LLMS, large language models, to help with legal arguments, specifically in exploring different hypotheses and arguments. He also highlights the verification problem and discusses various technical approaches that could solve the issue of LLMs hallucinating information. Furthermore, he elaborates on the potential for an approach similar to Wikipedia to be used for LLMs that would be probabilistically correct in providing information. 
He acknowledges the challenge in determining what is true and emphasizes the need for humility and skepticism towards those who claim to know the truth. However, he notes that scientific methods and rationality can bring us closer to the truth while cautioning against complacency towards answers we do not like. Zero hours, 25 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andresen discusses the impact of LLS, large language models, on the scientific process. He uses the example of Galileo to illustrate how human feedback and training data can affect LLMs in the context of historical events. Andreessen also questions the current state of traditional journalism and how social media and other media environments have changed the way people experience reality. He argues that the intermediation caused by media environments influences feedback loops and creates a different reality. Ultimately, he believes that the impact of LLMS and media environments on people's perception of reality makes it difficult to determine the truth and undermines the scientific process. Zero hours, 30 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the collapse of trust in institutions in the U.S., specifically since the early 1970s. He notes that while some may view this as a loss of the old world and a desire to return to trusting institutions, others may view it as a result of knowing more about how institutions operate and realizing they are not that impressive. He suggests that media plays a key role in shaping our perception and understanding of reality, and that changing the media environment could change reality. Andreessen also speculates on the potential for large language models to become the new mainstream media, and discusses the possibility of AI systems retraining and prompting themselves in real time. However, he acknowledges that it is not yet possible to predict the form of AI in our lives and how it will intermediate our experience with reality. Zero hours, 35 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the future of big models versus small models in the AI industry and the possibility of a few big models achieving regulatory capture and becoming the new tech giants. On the other hand, he also speculates a world of open-source LLMs, with a billion LLMs of every size, scale, shape, and description where every smart 14-year-old on the planet is building open source. He mentions the transformer invented by Google in 2017 and how Google could have launched GPT-4 in 2019 by sprinting with the transformers, but cited reasons why they didn't. However, he acknowledges that Google is in the game and is piling in resources, indicating that they might be building an incredible super LLM beyond what they have today. Zero hours, 40 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the advantages and disadvantages of startups versus big tech companies in the tech industry. Startups have the ability to create something new without any limitations or communication overhead, while big tech companies have the advantage of scale and resources. However, startups lack the brand, customer relationships, and distribution that big tech companies already have, and are currently facing difficulties in obtaining necessary resources like GPUs. Andreessen believes that the idealized world is where both startups and big tech companies compete without any subsidies or protection, as it allows for the best outcomes in the tech industry. Zero hours, 45 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the possibility of the web browser disappearing in the future as we move towards a more AI-powered world. He suggests that there could be a super browser with AI built in, or a single app that could replace the need for a web browser altogether. Andreessen also highlights the importance of preserving the free and open nature of the early Internet, where anyone with an IP address could publish content and express their ideas without censorship and without needing permission from a centralized authority. He suggests that we need to preserve the Wild West of the Internet to allow for creativity and innovation to thrive. Zero hours, 55 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses his interpretation of Steve Jobs' dogmatic pursuit of design perfection. He believes that Jobs had a deep sense of aesthetics, which went beyond just appearances and extended to the underlying meaning of a product. Jobs trusted his judgment on aesthetics, even when engineers, finance teams, and supply chains said that it was impossible to achieve. 
Andreessen highlights that Jobs' properly designed device had the correct functionality, the deepest understanding of the user, and the most beautiful design. He set the bar high for his employees and pushed them to perform at their best. Andreessen contrasts the Apple way, which is to polish, 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 and don't ship until it's perfect, with the incremental hacker mentality. He acknowledges that there are successful companies that adopt both approaches, and each has its pros and cons. One hour, zero minutes, and zero seconds, to two hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. Mark Andreessen discusses the history of the Internet and how it has evolved over time, from the early days of the Mosaic browser to the development of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and SSL. He also delves into the potential of AI to augment human intelligence and drive advancements in fields such as physics and medicine, while acknowledging the possible negative consequences. Andreessen argues that the benefits of AI augmentation outweigh the risks and that humanity will find ways to manage the risks that arise. However, he warns against basing policy on untestable hypotheses and calls for a rational response to the risk of AI. One hour, zero minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the different approaches to building and creating software and hardware. He mentions that software tends to do better with the iterative approach, while hardware tends to do better with the wait-and-make-perfect approach, but it is possible to find examples in both directions. Mark also talks about the early days of the Internet and the Mosaic browser, which aimed to make the Internet graphical, easy to use, and bulletproof. He also talks about the evolution of graphical user interfaces from Windows 3.0 to the iPhone and the fast ramp from even a graphical computer at all on your desk to the iPhone, which only took 15 years. Mark also recalls keeping one of the first blogs called the What's New page and how it was hardwired into the browser and how he would list new websites that people emailed him, which was how people discovered new websites at the time. One hour, five minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen talks about the early days of the Internet, when there were just a few restaurants putting their menus online and a coffee pot streaming video was a big deal. There was skepticism from the media and practical hurdles to getting online, such as installing TCP drivers and modems, but they made bets that demand would be so high that these problems would be solved. There were also debates about whether to include images on the web and fears of cybercrime and terrorism, which led to the development of strong encryption. The Netscape browser faced engineering challenges and legal battles due to its encryption, but it was a breakthrough in making strong encryption available to ordinary people. One hour, ten minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the controversial bet of whether to optimize for performance or for ease of creation when engineering the Internet protocols and formats. Despite pressure to optimize for performance due to slow network connections and slow computers, they decided to optimize for ease of creation by using text-based protocols and formats. The view source function and HTML's messiness were fundamental to the development of the web and allowed an 8-year-old or an 11-year-old to make a web page for their turtle, making it a biological-like mess. Engineers wanted to make it binary encoded for faster performance, but the decision for ease of creation resulted in Internet users being resilient to all HTML mistakes. One hour, 15 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the surge in demand for broadband and how it required the emergence of demand for it. To get phone companies to build up broadband infrastructure, it needed to be clear that faster Internet speed would be better and more people would want it. The conversation then moves on to the development of HTML and CSS and the separation of content from appearance, which is still present to this day. Mark Andreessen also touches on the development and impact of JavaScript and SSL, both of which were created by small teams or even a single person. The pattern in software is that for really creative work, it's usually done by a small team of two or three people. One hour, 20 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the potential of open-source movements in the new age of AI and how it can empower the individual coder. Releasing models as open-source can be scary yet exciting as it puts the models into the hands of individuals who desire to do good in the world. Mark also shares his experience of the acquisition of Netscape during the height of the dot-com boom bubble bust 
and how software is a modern philosopher's stone that transmutes labor into capital. The economics behind software are special and magical, and it is creating permanent value as software engineers transmute their own labor into a national capital asset, which is inspiring and bigger today than before. One hour, 25 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen explains the parabolic life cycle of new software and how some software assets that have been around for decades continue to gain value every year. He points out that the potential market size for any software product is nearly infinite, as there are 5 billion people online. He then goes on to explain the main thesis of his essay, which highlights the importance of intelligence in the hands of humans and how it can make everything better, resulting in better quality of life, peacefulness, and open-mindedness. He believes that if artificial intelligence can increase human intelligence, it will ultimately make life easier and better for every individual through augmenting human capabilities with a personal assistant that is infinitely patient, knows everything about an individual, and helps them achieve their goals. One hour, 30 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the potential of AI to significantly enhance human intelligence and drive advancements in fields such as physics and medicine. He acknowledges that there may be negative consequences as well, such as the potential for smart individuals to become more arrogant and susceptible to justifying their preconceptions. However, he argues that the overall benefits of AI augmentation outweigh any potential negative impacts, and that AI is simply the latest in a long series of technologies aimed at augmenting human potential. He notes that there are two groups of people who are concerned about the impact of AI, the Baptists, who worry about the moral implications, and the bootleggers, who are concerned about how AI might disrupt established power structures. One hour, 35 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen explains the metaphor of Baptists and bootleggers, which is a concept from development economics that describes a pattern where two sets of people come together to advocate for social reform in a society. He uses the example of alcohol prohibition in the early 1900s, where the Baptists were the social reformers who believed alcohol was the evil destroying society, while the bootleggers, who were part of organized crime, stood to make a huge amount of money if legal alcohol sales were banned. They both came together to get the Volstead Act passed, which led to the banning of alcohol sales, making the bootleggers a lot of money. This pattern is repeating itself in the development of artificial intelligence, where the same two categories of folks are advocating for AI regulation, the true believers who think AI will destroy humanity and those who stand to financially gain from AI regulation. One hour, 40 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the phenomenon of apocalypse cults and how they form around the theory of the end of the world. He explains that this is because there is a deep psychological need for transcendence and meaning in human consciousness, which has been lost in modern secular society. While some groups may be correct in their predictions of the end of the world, the claims are mainly religious, not scientific, and cannot be disproven. Andreessen also notes that the more true believers a group has, the more radical they become, and the rise of increasingly powerful technologies means that we cannot rule out the possibility of an event that will bring civilization crashing down. One hour, 45 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the scientific validity of making predictions about the future and the dangers of basing policy on untestable hypotheses. He explains that forecasting and modeling are not a scientific approach and warns against making policy decisions based on these predictions, citing the flawed models used during the COVID-19 pandemic that led to panic and poor decisions. Andreessen argues that calling for regulation or bans on AI due to a hypothetical future threat is also not a sound scientific approach and could lead to extreme and violent reactions if taken too seriously. However, he recognizes the possibility of a rational response to the risk of AI and suggests being careful and taking a pause in development. One hour, 50 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the usefulness of models in the context of the pandemic. 
While models cannot be relied upon if they are wrong, they can still be valuable in discussions about how to respond to threats like pandemics. Andreessen envisions the best computer scientists and software engineers responding aggressively to a pandemic by creating models that take in data about the virus to help policymakers make informed decisions. However, modeling a complex dynamic system with 8 billion moving parts is a difficult task, and the policymakers during the pandemic were not paying enough attention to the right models. Ultimately, Andreessen believes that humility and not believing everything scientists say are crucial to determining the truth. One hour, 55 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the shortcomings of the AI risk community and their lack of concrete models to analyze the risks associated with artificial intelligence. He points out that they don't even have the equivalent of a government model to work with, just a theory and a warning which he finds to be more of a sleight-of-hand trick rather than actual science. He does think that the risks associated with AI are worth analyzing, but the benefits outweigh the risks, and he believes that humanity will find ways to manage the risks that arise. Furthermore, he argues that as we get more actual systems that start to get more intelligent, we can have more scientific arguments based on concrete models and systems. Two hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds to three hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. Mark Andreessen discusses a range of topics in his interview with Lex Fridman, including AI and military strategies, the historical perspective of nuclear weapons, misinformation and content control in AI, the inevitability of AI in the future, and the potential jobs created by AI. He also expresses concerns about China's authoritarian approach to AI and suggests open-source LLM developed by individual creators. Andreessen's approach to learning is a combination of breadth and depth, and he recommends books on American politics, history, and civilization, including The Ancient City. He believes that we live in a world that is more advanced, moral, and nicer, but it is a very washed-out version of the original model, which explains why we are so prone to reach for drama. Two hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. In this section of the transcript, Mark Andreessen discusses the use of AI in military strategies and the decision-making process regarding dropping bombs. He argues that machines should be making the decision instead of humans because humans are god-awful at making those decisions. He also believes that machines have the potential to be super intelligent, but not necessarily super wise, leading to potential disastrous consequences. However, he also acknowledges that these fears should be correctly calibrated and that extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Andreessen also discusses the use of LLMs in resolving moral dilemmas, which already shows that AI can reason about goals and think through nuanced decisions. Two hours, five minutes, and zero seconds. In this section of the interview, Mark Andreessen discusses the historical perspective of the creation of nuclear weapons and the critique of J. Robert Oppenheimer, who is widely considered the father of the atomic bomb. The deeper debate goes into whether or not Russia should have nuclear weapons and how Oppenheimer's moral beliefs may have contributed to the ethos at that time, which resulted in people thinking that the principal thing to do was to give the Russians the bomb. Andreessen warns that the moral beliefs and public discussion that inventors have about a technology can have real consequences, and that there needs to be education and laws surrounding these technologies in order to prevent mistakes in the future. Two hours, ten minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses how nuclear weapons prevented World War III through the game theory of mutually assured destruction. The military planners on both sides thought war was inevitable and that there would be at least 100 million people dead. However, the decision to hand over the bomb was made by people who weren't moral authorities and had a terrible track record of making moral judgments. The history of these fields shows that senior scientists and technologists have a terrible track record of making moral judgments in the use of new technology. Two hours, 15 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the issue of misinformation and hate speech in the AI field. He notes that it is a continuation of the war over social media and that the same activist approach has been transplanted straight to AI. 
While he acknowledges the desire for a world where everyone is nice to each other and everything is accurate and honest, he warns against a centralized thought police that would enforce the views of a small set of elites on what the rest of us think and feel. Instead, he suggests a middle ground like the moderation of Wikipedia, which is crowdsourced and not subject to centralized control. Two hours, twenty minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the challenges of censoring AI models, particularly when used for violent or harmful activities. He highlights the difficulty in drawing lines between acceptable and unacceptable content, and the dangers of individuals abusing the power of censorship. He suggests a potential solution through community notes, where a note is only created if people who have previously disagreed on multiple topics agree on the current one. He also emphasizes the importance of using AI defensively to prevent bad actors from committing crimes or creating bioweapons. The conversation ends with a discussion on the potential regulatory and legal challenges of restricting access to open-source AI technology. Two hours, 25 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses the dangers of implementing guardrails on AI and content control, pointing out that it could lead to a society controlled by authoritarian thought and machine control. He emphasizes the need for open-source models, noting that to live in a world where open-source is not allowed is a world of draconian speech, human, and machine control. However, he acknowledges that there are big questions around how companies operate under different policies and regulations, including the liability around generating content from LM. Ultimately, he highlights the fact that the shape and size of AI technology are changing drastically and regulatory decisions need to keep pace with these technological advancements. Two hours, 30 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen speaks about the inevitability of AI and its omnipresence in the future. He states that AI is going to be in the air, in textbooks, and everywhere else we look. Andreessen acknowledges the concerns of AI-generated pathogens, inequality, and other risks. He suggests having a permanent Manhattan-style project to build broad-spectrum vaccines and biological defense against such risks. Andreessen calls defense super exciting and says that he believes in the good of human nature, as many people want to help others. Andreessen believes that AI would also help reduce inequality, stating that companies would earn the most profit by offering services to the largest market possible, which is everyone on the planet. According to him, the way to boost the market is by driving down prices and selling more volume, which would lead to greater accessibility to technology like AI. Andreessen assures that the tech industry is fundamentally built on capitalist self-interest, so there is no need to fear that only a small group of people will benefit from it. Two hours, 35 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen dismisses the idea that AI will take over all the jobs, citing the lump of labor fallacy, which assumes that there is a limited amount of work in the world that machines will replace, leaving people with no jobs. He argues that the introduction of technology into the production process causes prices to fall and consumers to have more spending power, thus creating new demand. This leads to the formation of new enterprises and more jobs with higher wages. Andreessen acknowledges that there will be turnover in jobs and that the experience of losing a job and having to learn new skills can be painful, but he suggests that the new jobs are often better and people can adapt by using AI-assisted technology to pick up new skills more quickly. He also emphasizes the important risk of China winning global AI dominance and the potential harm that could result from China's authoritarian approach to AI, such as surveillance, population control, and the end of human freedom. Two hours, 40 minutes, and zero seconds. In this section, Mark Andreessen discusses China's plans to roll out its version of AI on top of its global networking infrastructure, potentially leading to authoritarian control for countries susceptible to it and backdoors for countries not prone to it. He also mentions China's alignment of communist AI with reports of their LM's success in the Chinese equivalent of the SAT, which includes sections on Marxism, and Maoist thought. Andreessen's overall hope is for open-source LLM developed by individual creators rather than large centralized institutions. He also reflects on the shift of tech moving from a tools industry to an applications industry with the rise of startups like Uber, Lyft, and Airbnb.
He concludes with advice for startup founders, pointing to intelligence, passion, and courage as key qualities for success.